Welcome back, ramen lovers. Today, we have a great question about vegetables from Stacy. Here's Stacy's question. My kids love ramen, but there aren't a lot of vegetables in ramen. Is there any way I can get them to eat more veggies with their noodles? Luckily, there are many different ways to include vegetables in your ramen. This applies to anyone looking for more fiber in their ramen, and not just for kids. Today, I'll talk about why you should add more greens into your ramen, what type of veggies to add into your ramen, and how to cook them. First, adding greens make your ramen look more appetizing. It's like adding a garnish to your dish. Veggies also add some complexity to your ramen, and by adding it to your ramen, you'll probably feel less guilty when eating it. So, are you thinking now, what types of vegetables can I add into my ramen? I'll give you a quick list of five different types of vegetables you can add to your ramen, but you can definitely add other ones not mentioned in my list. First off, let's start with my favorite, spinach. There are three reasons which make spinach a well-liked topping for ramen. First, spinach has a lot of vitamins and is a great source of nutrition. In addition, the deep dark green color of spinach makes it aesthetically tasty. Spinach also works well with thick soup because of its simple yet refreshing taste. This helps with digestion and the stuffy and heavy feeling from thick broth. Next, we have green onions. Green onions promote the taste of ramen by creating a harmony with the soup. The smell and subtle spiciness of green onions add a little kick to your ramen. It's said that people have used green onions as a folk remedy because they believe that green onions can help you recover from exhaustion. After knowing this, you're going to feel energetic when eating it. Have you heard of memma? Memma is fermented bamboo shoots. The process of the lactic fermentation, aging, and sun drying gives memma its umami flavor. It will add some umami into your broth. What about wakame? Have you heard of it? This is seaweed full of minerals, fibers, and vitamins. The fibers in wakame are really good for your gut, and it is also good for your blood pressure. Last but not least, bean sprouts. Bean sprouts are a common topping that goes well with miso ramen. People enjoy the combination of bean sprouts with their ramen as it adds a texture of crunchiness to their noodles. However, some people don't like this as a topping as the moisture from the bean sprouts can thin out the taste of the soup. Now that we have a list of few vegetable toppings for ramen, let's look at different ways to cook this. First up is pan frying. Pan frying on high heat for a short period of time is actually a good way to cook vegetables because it can prevent the veggies from losing their nutrition by high heat. Next, one of my favorite ways to cook vegetables is grilling them since it's so simple. Just put your veggies in an oven or toaster oven and set a timer. If you're feeling lazy and don't want to wash an extra pot or pan or don't have an oven for grilling, you might want to try boiling your vegetables. There are two ways to boil your vegetables. One is cooking veggies after you bring the water to a boil. You can use this way for vegetables that you harvest from the ground since they cook fast. For example, leafy greens, beans, and tomatoes. The other is cooking veggies by putting them directly into cold water before it comes to a boil. This is for potatoes and other root vegetables. They're thick, so they take time to cook. Boiling them this way will allow veggies to be cooked evenly. So now that you have a list of vegetables and ways to cook them for your ramen, I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you for watching, and thanks again to Stacy for the question. I'm so glad I was able to discuss how to make ramen more healthy with you.